Hello, hello, everyone. Um, about 30 seconds later, so as I always do with these live streams, uh, please give me a, a minute or not even a minute, like 30 seconds, just to make sure that everything's doing what's supposed to be doing technology wise. Um, and then we'll kind of get started. And let's see where we're at with this. Dun, dun, dun. And uh, yep, there it is. So yeah, things are looking really good. I hope uh, I understand some people are probably uh, watching something else <laughs> that's on the networks right now. But um, the live streams will stay up um, on Facebook and also will be on YouTube, YouTube as always. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for just tuning into uh, the virtual studio here. My name is Mark Sugiyama from Eclectic Arts. And uh, I, for those that are a part and familiar with the Alice tour that I was with, uh, we just finished that yesterday. And now I'm on my own going solo again for a bit. And we'll kind of see when our paths cross again with Alice. But um, I'm really excited to do this interview tonight, uh, have a really talented guest with me. And uh, before we get to that, I want to mention that uh, coming up tomorrow is the fun table sessions round 12. So I've got three brand new um, table guests that will be joining me. And we're going to have some fun the whole kind of happy hour virtual thing that we do. We talk about random stuff. And uh, I've got three photojournalists that will be joining me. And then on Saturday, I have Beatrice Mariano from Occultist, who will be joining me at 11 a.m. because she's in Portugal. So we have a time zone thing. But uh, everything she does has her stamp on it. If you see their videos, see her photography, I mean, you know that you're looking at, a, at something that Beatrice has done. So I'm really excited to have her on uh, Saturday. But let's Scott, start talking about tonight. My guest tonight is uh, a progressive rock and metal band from California. They are a two-piece band with classical training background. Please welcome to the Electric Arts Virtual Studio, Jessica from Deanthus. And let me bring her in here. What's up? Hey, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing excellent. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for taking the time tonight. Of course. It's a pleasure to be here. Perfect, perfect. So as we were kind of talking a little bit pre-show, and I've been talking with all the guests I've done on this um, this virtual tour, how are you holding up during um, during the pandemic time? Uh, I'm holding up pretty well. I'm staying creative at home, especially, you know, being a musician, having a lot of time with my instrument and um, also jamming with my sister all the time. Um, it's been it's been a really good time to rediscover our sound and also, you know, um, be more present and go, just go outside and enjoy life. Okay, walk around. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I With actually, the mask, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually did that earlier today when I was like, no, I need to get out of my place here and go get some air. Yeah, you just just the simple things, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I've talked with a lot of guests um, that I've been, again, been doing these virtual interviews with, and uh, mm -hmm. it's been very much about finding um, silver linings during this time, and, and they mm -hmm. are there, and, you know, keeping, yeah. keeping your perspective on things, and uh, uh, it's so easy not to, you know, with all the craziness that's going on, but um, mm -hmm. th there are things that, um, you know, I'm very, very grateful for and looking forward to and, you know, things of that nature, so we'll, we'll get yeah. through this um, a we bit. Will. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Stay strong, yep. Yeah. Um, and so I know that you and your sister have a, um, a lengthy uh, classical background in terms of piano, at least. And so can you kind mm -hmm. of speak to those early, those early beginnings with music? Of course, yes. Um, it's a, a huge part of who we are and um, why we have the sound we do now. Um, it was the very first thing that we did, um, music-wise. So when we were at um, age seven, we started classical piano. Um, and then we continued that very avidly for about 10 years. Um, and we're still playing piano, obviously. But um, that instrument was so important because it taught us, you know, timing, um, melody, um, creativity. So um, classical music in particular, um, it's very technical. So you can have violins and, you know, orchestral kind of things. So um, we just really love how it challenged us. Okay, and yeah. when you're when specifically for yourself, when you were learning piano all those years, um, uh -huh. did you did you kind of hit the ground running? Mean that you liked the instrument, or did it kind of take a while until you kind of had that epiphany, epiphany moment where it's like, oh, I really love this? Yeah, um, it it was just um, right away. You know, it wasn't a slow build. Um, it was super fun. Just even just sitting at the piano and you know hearing melody just right away with just 
the stroke of a key. Um, it was very exciting and um, also starting to read music too and um, cover songs, like just like little simple songs from um, stuff I've heard as a kid um, was really exciting. And my sister and I too, so we did um, duets as well. So she'd be on the, the a bass clef and I'd be up on the higher end of the piano. So it, we had like little healthy competition too. <laughs> it's always been fun. Nice. And I, I know they've talked about uh, being a musician myself that when you learn piano, it's one of the main instruments in terms of songwriting. Um, it's such a huge uh -huh. tool to have as your, as your background. And yeah. um, I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but did that um, kind of factor into how you approach writing songs now with uh, Dianthus? It definitely does. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it's um, it's been the foundation of um, all things music for us. So we always approach um, the drums and the guitar in a classical kind of way. So um, sometimes we like to be raw and do less is more, you know, old rock and roll. But um, classical has really trained us to think a little bit deeper. So, you know, about, you know, song structure and how um, the timing is, you know. So, um, yeah, it's always, you know, taught us to be very technical with our sound. Okay, yeah, that would make sense. I mean, when I was listening yeah. to some of the uh, some of your music, and it was like, yeah, there's obviously a progressive element going on. There's a metallic mm -hmm. element. There's a lot of melody for sure in your music, which is nice to hear. Um, Thanks. Yeah, and I'm I'm curious that uh, with you and your sister being um, a two piece, was that something that you just kind of organically said, well, let's kind of jam on some stuff and we'll just kind of move this forward? Or did you ever think about, well, we should get another member or a couple other members? Yeah, um, well, it didn't start off that way. We originally um, wanted a full band and we actually did experiment with members, um, girls and um, boys as well. Because, um, you know, the classic metal setup is a four piece kind of band. You have your two guitars, um, singer, bass player, drums. So um, we had that set up for a while, but um, writing music was very different because, you know, my sister and I, uh, we are twins. And so we have like a telepathic kind of way that we write. We finish each other's sentences musically. So um, it was kind of, you know, a bit tricky for other members to catch on to that, um, as well as performing live. We just, you know, we had that chemistry. And um, after a while, we're like, we wanted to challenge ourselves and you know, just be a two piece and do kind of even more work at the same time. Okay, that makes sense, especially with your backgrounds as it's kind of almost like a challenge, like why don't we incorporate bass and keyboards and anything else that we want on our own uh, right. to your songs. Okay, no, that makes a lot of sense. Um, uh -huh. How did you figure out who's gonna play what initially when you kind of went from piano to your, your various instruments? <laughs> um, it was kind of a funny story, um, kind of like the Van Halen story a little bit, because <laughs> um, I, I originally um, wanted to pursue guitar um, to, to, in particular, actually was um, the acoustic guitar I wanted to try. And then, you know, I tried it and for some reason I wasn't getting that coordination. Um, it was a little bit hard trying to match up my hands <laughs> with just playing everything that, that way. So I kind of gave up on it and, you know, my sister tried it out. And she's actually left-handed. So she actually had a natural inclination to it. So she picked it up right away. And um, I thought drums were really fun because you don't have to hold back and play the right note. So um, I, I chose drums and um, the rest is history. It was really fun. Okay. And, and when, so when you were first learning um, the drum kit, was that something you were just doing on your own because you had a music background? Or did you take some lessons on top of that? Or how did that work? Yeah, yeah, I always, um, you know, took lessons with the teacher and, um, you know, obviously now um, I'm self-taught and I kind of learned through YouTube and stuff and um, my own kind of experimentation on, on things. But um, yeah, I had a teacher, very grateful for him. Um, um, we took lessons at the rock school. So um, we're able to, you know, get the feel of being in the band and, you know, working with other kids and stuff. So that really helped. Yeah. Okay. And did you know when you were learning the drum kit that um, that you wanted to do like a rock style of drumming? Did you start or look at like jazz styles or any other kind of you know things with the drum kit? Um, you know, ironically, um, you know, not really, not really um, jazz, but 
you know, every time I thought of drums, I just thought of rock, okay. <laughs> you know, just watching movies like School of Rock, like, I was like, oh, if you're a drummer, you got to play rock. So um, that's how it kind of happens. And, you know, um, rock is kind of easy to catch on to. You've got your 4-4 four, four kind of grooves. So, um, you know, the fact that I could catch on really fast, it made it more fun to get into that genre. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. I know, like, for, uh -huh. my, for myself, um, my brother was learning jazz, and then, but we both grew up with rock and heavy metal and that kind of stuff. So when I grabbed yeah. the car, it's like, well, let's learn a power chord. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just go for it. Yeah. Yeah, because you want to be able to play, you know, the songs that you like or some kind of song, something. So you, you have know, to emulate. Yep. Yeah, you can impress your friends or whatever or, or embarrass yourself, one of the two. But <laughs> <laughs> it's all a learning experience for sure. Yeah. And uh, so when uh, you and your sister first started writing your own material um, when you're playing drums and she's on guitar and all that, um, what was that process like or what is it still like now? It's always you know, super exciting. It's, you know, it's like Christmas time opening your presents because um, you never know what is going to happen, you know, as far as songwriting. Sometimes we have a direction where, you, where we want it to sound, you know, very dark and heavy and aggressive. But most of the time it just, it kind of pieces itself together and it starts from usually a riff or um, a drum groove. And then we just kind of have our telepathic kind of songwriting process where we just kind of finish each other's sentences and the um the song kind of builds itself okay and um yeah. do you or your sister uh write most of the lyrics um i would say it's kind of a 50 50 really because um there's some times where um you know i'll write in my lyric book and i have a notebook and i just kind of go on autopilot and scribble some really cool lyrics down and I don't even have a melody in mind. I just kind of just write things down. And then Jackie actually comes up with the melody. And sometimes she'll actually have lyrics already. So it's 50-50. Okay, no, that's that's <laughs> awesome. I, I think most Thanks. most musicians that write songs have that, that notebook somewhere. <laughs> <that>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, tools of the trade for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have one. I can see it in the corner over there in my, in my room right now where I, where I have stuff written down because when you get, yeah. that, get that inspiration, you just go, I'm going to put this down and put it in there because I don't know where it's going to fit, but I don't want to lose it either. So Right. Yeah, you can't use your phone for that kind of stuff, you know. Sometimes you can if you're on the go, but a notebook is a good tangible thing. Yeah, couldn't agree more for, uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, and uh, have since like you talked about that kind of synergy being uh, fraternal twins and that kind of mm -hmm. thing with your sister, have you been looking at, or maybe you've already done it, where you're um, – switching instruments at all? I know you were saying that, you know, guitar was kind of hard for you, but have you thought about, you know, she goes on the drum kit for a song and you're on the guitar? <laughs> um, well, it, it's funny because, yeah, we will kind of um, joke around and still hop on the drum set and then I'll try to really teach her something and the coordination's not there either. But um, if there is one instrument I would, you know, love to, to try, I would probably say bass. Um, one less string. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> uh, bass is, it just seems really cool because it's, it's very important with drums because it's got that, you know, that synergy with drums and bass and groove. So probably bass um, and, you know, just singing in general because I do do backups on drums, but yeah, to sing and play piano is fun. Okay. Yeah, no, and that makes sense too when you're talking about learning bass and, and being that rhythm section. Um, yeah. How, how they work off each other. Mm -hmm. um, I've mentioned this story before to other guests that uh, I was playing guitar, but then like when I was in high school, um, I owned a bass. So, and there weren't any bass mm -hmm. players. So it's always like, well, Mark, why don't oh. you play bass since you have one? <laughs> so, like, right. by, yeah, by default, I learned it. And then it wasn't so much later that I started understanding how it worked together. Um, oh, nice. Uh, with the drum kit and, you know, find, mm -hmm. yeah, fi finding that groove and finding how those things really have to kind of come together. Um, yeah. So, you know, that, that makes that makes perfect sense for, uh, to me for sure. And awesome. uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, I saw that you have a, a remastered release um, that is. We do. So can, were you not happy with it originally or what kind of what prompted it to, to go through the remastering process? Yeah. So, um. It actually is still a fairly new album. We originally released it in 2018. So um, yeah, it's still fairly new, but the reason we did the remastering was because, you know, um, we recently did get signed to um, Deco Entertainment. They're um, a division of Warner Music Group. 
and we wanted to kind of rebrand ourselves and um, the album art was kind of different before. So the remastering album actually has a brand new artwork. Um, it's very post-apocalyptic kind of. So we just wanted to kind of give a fresh kind of look to the album and sound. Okay. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And that's, that's gotta uh -huh. be, that's gotta be exciting to be signed to a, uh, a label that's associated with uh, you know, with something so big. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, you know, we still work just as hard as we did even before that, you know, just kind of keep staying inspired. Okay, and yeah. um, it seems like you have, you're doing what, what most artists are doing these days where they're putting out singles and to kind of build up into like their next release or something, even like Alice who I was on tour with, same thing, they're kind of putting out, I think three or four singles. Um, uh -huh. Is that something that you uh, kind of consciously plan to do with Dianthus? Yeah, yeah, definitely a conscious plan. You know, um, before before that, we wanted to just, you know, boom, just release the full album. Um, but especially now with the whole situation, you know, you can't tour, so you can't tour with a full record. So uh, singles are a great way to, you know, pop in every now and then to your fans and give them something fun and fresh each month. So I think it's a good option. Yeah, it is. And I think, um, you know, with everything moving to streaming as it has in the last three to five years, it makes sense because people are listening to songs, not necessarily albums until they really get into somebody. So True. Um, that and you're right during <laughs> during this time, it, it makes sense to kind of just plant a seed here, here and here instead of, instead of just giving them the whole plant and saying, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, because they, they have to have time to process, you know, what, what you created and you want them to take each song very seriously, too. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and with, with Dianthus's sound, um, what kind of influences do you and your sister have, uh, like musically, who were you, kind of your heroes growing up? Yeah. Um, well, you know, once we got into rock and roll and, and metal and stuff, um, we, we loved the classic rock band. So definitely like fans of, you know, Van Halen, of course, Rush, um, you know, even female fronted heart, Pat Benatar, Joan Jett, you know, um, you know, aesthetically, musically, um, but as far as like metal and progressive, um, you know, we are huge fans of Tool, Gojira, you know, that's a modern metal band. Um, also, um, your 80s rock band, so like Mr. Big and stuff, just your powerful arena choruses, for sure. <laughs> Love that band. Okay, and I'm just curious, uh, like with the 80s music and bands in particular, was that something you and your sister discovered on your own or did they come from your parents or an uncle or somebody or how did you kind of get into that music? To be honest, you know, um, as I mentioned before, how we started, you know, um, at the rock school, um, you know, they would throw these, you know, awesome legendary songs at us to cover. And um, it was just, you know, something that we had to learn and we really loved that kind of sound anyway. So I I'm glad that they threw us the 80s rock songs and not something pop based too much. <laughs> so we kind of grew up more with that. So it's good. Okay. Yeah. No, that, that, see, that makes perfect sense. As soon as you start talking about that, it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, mentioned, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned school of rock and rock school stuff. So that would make sense. Um, of course. Yeah. And for someone like me who grew up during that time, I love the fact that younger generations are turned on to, you know, an ACDC or a Van Halen or a Rush or um, yeah. any, anything from that era of the 80s um mm -hmm. when you actually had to play your instrument and and learn it <laughs> <laughs> exactly use your hands use all your limbs yeah yeah there was no auto tune or pro tools or anything back then you actually had to be able to play yes and you you only had a certain amount of time in the studio you know when you're recording in the tracks so you had to get it right yeah it's it's no it's no different than like what it is for me as a photographer that from the, the analog film days where you had you know 24 shots on on film or digital where you have infinite amount of pictures basically you can take it, it's yeah. a whole different mentality it's like in the old days man if you screw that up <laughs> you screwed it up exactly there's no going back yeah 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 for sure um but. and uh so yeah but at the same time there's also definitely pluses of today's technology um to <laughs> you, you can record remotely you could be in other places you know with other musicians around the world even and just exchanging tracks and all these kind of things which you know couldn't be done back then totally uh, so, it's really crazy. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm just curious off the top of my head, um, for someone like yourself and your sister, 
What's it mm-hmm. like uh, being in a band during this social media age? I mean, uh, again, I'm older, <laughs> so I, I didn't grow uh-huh. up with this. I can't really even imagine what it's like. So from your perspective, what's it like dealing with social media from a band perspective in 2020? Yeah, um, you know, it, it's it's kind of intense, you know, because it's, it's definitely about your branding right off the bat. So you got to, you know, have that presence, you know, um, not just music wise. I mean, it is very important to, you know, be the most original you can be music wise, but, you know, branding and social media, it's, you know, what they see is what they get kind of thing. So we've had lots of pressure to, you know, really kind of, um, you know, show ourselves to, to our fans and try to attract them in that way, you know, so it's just a lot of pressure with, um, you know, just having a good presence online. And being unique yeah no that, that that makes sense and also um i think um it, everything's so immediate so like if someone right. discovers you and then they might be able to try to do you know a comment on a post or something on social media and maybe it's yep. a positive post or maybe it's a not so positive post there's all this <laughs> yeah immediate, yeah there's this unfortunate immediate feedback that never was there before you know g- good exactly. or bad. Uh, yeah you feel like you have to constantly you know update people that's another thing too because you can't just take too much time off of, you know, updating people because they're like, what happened? <laughs> so it's like you always got to, you know, stay on top of it and connect with everybody. Yeah, no, I, I even from my small little part of the world, I, I understand that same kind of thing. It's like, when was the last time I posted something? And I'll, I'll start thinking about it. It's like, well, I have these things coming up. So you want to make sure that you promote them. But then mm-hmm. if you promote too much, then they kind of forget about it or it gets intermixed with something. True. Um, or it's like, yeah, you didn't promote it enough. <laughs> so they, they, yeah, they, uh, I know it, it's just um, different algorithms too, and ads and stuff. So it, yeah. it's interesting, whole other realm of things. Yeah, for sure. Um, and like you just said, that it's, you have to be careful about your branding, about what you put out to the fans, because they don't have to go search for it like they did in the old days, where they go go to a record store or a magazine shop or something trying to find something on Dianthus. Now they mm-hmm. can go back to their their phone even and just go to social media, look at your accounts, your official accounts, and just immediately see things about you. Um, yeah. And that's, yeah, to me, that's kind of, it's kind of scary. <laughs> it's, right. <laughs> I mean, you can always take things down too, but you know, you want people to, um, you know, see you for who you are because there is so much different layers to social media, you know, like there's literally filters on things. So yeah. it's just, a, you know, all about that. Right. Right. Um, and with, you no know, Dianthus being a, um, a flower, Word is that you just both did you and your sister like flowers or something? Where did that come from? <laughs> well, um, it, it was yeah. It's interesting how that name kind of came about. Um, my sister actually um brought that name to me. Um, you know, we started Dianthus back in I think 2015. Um, so when we were looking at band names, we um, immediately were attracted to anything you know plants or like flowers. You know, being a feminine kind of um, group, we wanted to look at kind of metal, metallic sounding flowers. <laughs> so Dianthus really sounded kind of cool. Um, I thought it sounded like like Atlantis or some kind of cool, um, like larger than life kind of sound. And my sister is like, well, it also means longevity. So we do want our music to last a long time as well. So that the name is really fitting. Oh, that's, that's cool that you have um meaning behind the name and it's like like actual like you thought about the meaning of it could be mean this this and this and when we like all of it yeah yeah it's important because you want to you know stand up for who you are and you know we didn't want to just call ourselves the perry twins you know (laughs) we we wanted something very unique and um you know very metal sounding so (laughs) could have gone that way but no (laughs) yeah no the the name definitely works and um i yeah Yeah. i I think thank you yeah, I, I think back to when I was doing, I, I, so I was a model-based photographer for about 15 years, so I was shooting mm-hmm. like fashion stuff and all that. And um, I just remember, it's like, well, I'm a creative-minded person. I don't want it to be called, you know, Mark Photos or Sugiyama this or something. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like, it's uh, easy to do that, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I understand for some people, you know, it works for them. But for me, again, being creative and artistic mind, it's like, no, I'm going to need to spend more time with this and come up with something. <laughs> yeah, I do love the name, Eclectic Arts. Like, it, it has a good ring to it. Oh, yeah, thank you. I really dig it. Yeah, thanks. I, and like I mentioned to you pre-show, I mean, I, the umbrella of arts is so vast that I try to cover and live up to the name of so it's ballet and theater and musical theater and, and concerts and, um, mm-hmm. and anything that I consider artistic. And um, it's, 
uh, it's going to just continue to grow that way. That's that's what I'm into. Um, so, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, I see somebody saying metal sounding flower spot on. So that's cool. Okay. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when, what's it been like playing live? Uh, when you're doing songs or uh, have you had other musicians then join you sometimes or has it just been the two of you? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been different, but, um, in the past when we, um, were playing live shows, we, we also did have members on stage with us, but, um, you know, recently we branded ourselves as a duo primarily. So, um, performing live has been really cool because I have been able to, um, play drums with a click track so we can have, you know, um, our other instruments that we played in the studio, bass, synth, piano, um, it's all coming out through the speakers too while I'm playing to the click track. So it's like everything we played is um, happening at the same time. So it's really cool. Okay, yeah, no, see, that's, that is cool because that way fans know that what you're hearing, even if you don't see someone playing at the time, they played it somewhere before you're seeing the show. <laughs> exactly. I wish we could play everything, but yeah, we recorded everything. So. Oh, nice. Um, mm -hmm. And so with like the, the future music that you have coming up, uh, let's say into, you know, 2021, um, mm -hmm. is it going to be something similar to what you've already released? Is it going to be kind of getting more, you know, going in different directions? So what can we expect? Um, well, um, yeah, as far as the, the remastered album, that was actually our debut, um, Worth Living For, that's what it's called. So, um, yeah, our new sound um, for the forthcoming album in 2021, it's definitely going to be a lot more technical, a lot more progressive. Um, we're going to play a lot with our synth and classical side. Mm -hmm. So um, you can expect it to sound a lot more grand. And um, like we're kind of on that, that upreach to sounding heavier. Okay, nice. And um, gosh, the, we can't know what it's going to be like next year in terms of touring. Um, it's yeah. still a question mark for, for everybody, every level of band. Uh, everyone just kind of keeping their fingers crossed. And, yeah, yep. Yeah, just holding our breath. Yeah, <laughs> but no, I know they'll come back soon, hopefully. Yeah, for sure. And um, mm -hmm. as, as I've mentioned here and to you pre-show that um, that uh, I just came off of being on a virtual tour, doing live streams. Is that something that Dianthus is looking to do in the, in the interim? Um, you know, we're definitely considering it. You know, a month ago, um, we were kind of thinking of what to do, but I think as the months are going by, more time is passing and things still are kind of, you know, not really secure. We are definitely considering going on like a virtual streaming tour. A lot of bands are doing it. Um, Suicide Silence is doing it, um, you know, I'm not sure about My Chemical Romance, but I know they were on tour <laughs> before oh. this happened. But I think it'd be really good to take advantage of that, for sure. Yeah, it's it's been, as you know, initially this whole pandemic started where it was going to be like a sprint, then it turned into a marathon, then it turned into an ultra marathon, and now it's like we don't, <laughs> we don't, we don't really know what it's going to be. And um, it's like Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very much so. And, and you're right. Yep. The band you mentioned and other bands that I've seen, um, initially are kind of thinking, well, let's kind of wait and see and see what mm -hmm. happens. And then as it kept getting longer and longer, they're like, well, we better kind of figure out something and how to pivot during this. So what are other bands doing? It's like, well, now they're doing ticket sales, you know, for their virtual things. And um, yeah. which was unheard of back in March for the most part, but it's like, no, it makes sense. This is how you make a living. Then mm -hmm. you have to pivot. Um, and so yeah. I, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of that, um, at least in the next probably five to six months, really. Yeah, for sure. I know it's it's very serious too, and it is kind of a crazy kind of thing to do, like live streaming, because it's all about your audio. You want to sound good, you want to look good, you know. So it's it's a process, and we're all learning, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yep. you, you don't have to tell me that. <laughs> as it's I've, it's crazy. Yeah, as I've been on that tour with Alice, if you go back onto my YouTube and look at my early interviews, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> At least you have something to look back and laugh at, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's, kind of make, make light of it. Yeah. And it's a learning process, you know, so as long as you're getting better and learning from it, then hey, all is good. But uh, yeah, I was looking at my interviews the other day. I was like, wow, what happened to my voice? It was actually getting higher pitch because I was nervous. So my voice oh. was kind of going up here and um, mm -hmm. I, I didn't really know where to look. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You lose track. Yeah. Subconsciously but, these things happen, but yeah. Yeah. And that's a good point because I kind of noticed mannerisms I have because, you know, and this is for anyone out there. And we're mm -hmm. not used to having to look at ourselves in like for Zoom meetings, for business or anything else. But you keep yeah. seeing yourself all the time. It's like, 
what's that? And what am I doing with my hands? And what's what's over there? And I know, it, yeah. <laughs> and being a musician too, you're like, where's where's my drumsticks? I need to hold on to something. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's turned into this whole thing of like um, you have a mirror with you everywhere you go when you're doing these kind of things. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's second nature now, you know. Yeah. Um, so one thing I also wanted to ask was that, and I've asked some of the other um, uh, guests that I've had, is that uh, do you view things, or maybe what is your view on being uh, with you and your sister being female mm -hmm. in this type of industry, I meaning just the music industry in general? Is it something yeah. that you're consciously aware of, like how you want to, you know, come across, portray yourselves, or is it kind of like we don't give a f and we're just going to do what we do, or a little bit of a mix of both? Um, yeah, um, it is kind of kind of a, um, a mix of both. You know, um, we are, you know, definitely aware that metal is, you know, it's definitely a, a, a male kind of based genre, and yeah, coming into progressive rock too. You know, we don't really hear about too much, you know, females playing progressive rock stuff and. You know, we're definitely aware of that, but we're also very excited by that because we want to, you know, create something new for people um, visually and musically, too. So um, we want to bring a fresh look, a fresh sound to progressive rock metal. Um, and, you know, we chose that genre because it, it challenged us. And, you know, I'm the type of drummer to not want to just play 4-4 four, four all the time. Like, I, I love to write, you know, in different time signatures and throw people off, you know, like they're clapping in one second. They're like, what happened? <laughs> so yeah, it's always fun to to do progressive and um, yeah, just being females and in, in rock, it doesn't really bother us too much. Okay, yeah, no, I, I love the fact that you love the challenge of the genre. Um, yes, and um, that's why you'll find, as you probably already know, seeing lots of musicians in your audience. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> exactly. It's just yeah, it's a different genre, you know, and. Um, you know, especially nowadays, a lot of people are listening to different stuff and progressives kind of, you know, in that the back scene, but we want to bring it back again. You know, it's it can't be a lost genre. It's very relevant. Yes, here, here. I, I love the fact that, um, again, a younger generation, a younger band like yourselves are um, embracing that genre and trying to push it back out so other people know about it. So then they can progressive music. Exactly. Yeah, it's all about challenging yourself and being unique. Yeah, well. Jessica, I've got one more question I would like to ask you before we uh, kind of wrap this up. And that okay. is, what kind of advice would you give to an aspiring young musician like yourselves? Awesome. Yeah. Um, I would always say, you know, don't give up, you know, um, always stay very true to who you are and don't let, you know, anyone else that you see kind of affect how, how you want to be as an artist. You know, don't compare yourself. That's a really big one. Um, if you're doing something different, you're doing something right. So that's how I look at it. Always be unique. Very sound advice. Jessica, thank you so much Thanks. for taking the time tonight. And, of course. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the, the future releases. And I hope that you and your sister and everyone that you care about stay safe down there. And, thank um, you. Yeah, um, hopefully I'll get a chance once we get past this pandemic to actually see you play live. Yes, <laughs> that'd be awesome. Yeah, we need to meet in person sometime. <laughs> Perfect. Take Thank care. you. Thank you for taking the time and um, I will see you later. All right. Rock on.